Hi, welcome to the 3D pendant. I know, I promised you a lizard from start to finish, twice now. So let's make some lizards. Draw yourself a lizard outline. If you want this particular lizard, the pattern is in the 3D pendant Etsy store and the link is in the description below. Trace it onto some 3D pen friendly surface. I personally use plexiglass coated with matte acrylic finishing spray. Then you will need a can of Play-Doh to make your life easier. Roll a carrot shape out of it and you are well on your way to sculpting the third dimension of your lizard. First, find your outline. And then get the size and shape exactly as you want it. And lastly, clean the outline again, because that's where you need to land your lizard-shaped network. Now stretch the filament around the clay shape landing on that line. First in all the strategic spots. And then dividing it into smaller units that will be small enough to fill easily. Give him legs. Make some eyes, either by one of the six methods in the eye making video, the link is below, or in any other way that works for you. And plan where you're going to place them. The clay inside really helps with the planning of the face. 
so you don't put any plastic in your way like I have already done here. network which doesn't need to be quite as dense as with some other building methods because the clay will catch the fill and keep the intended shape without collapsing the grid inward. You can even slightly smooth the surface after each addition either with a rubber tool or finger guard but don't be too rough with it remember the clay is soft and you want it soft, so you can remove it easily. The Play-Doh works well for this because it is so non-stick. Some clays are not as suitable, but we discussed that in the introduction to clay forming, so watch that before you try this. The link is also in the description. I would like to raise his head a little bit, so he looks more alive. You don't want to make a dead lizard, do you? If you want to do any shape shifting, now is a good time while the plastic layer is still rather thin. And if things go a little sideways, you can easily fix them. Some people like to do this part with an open flame but I prefer the heat gun because you can control it better. I will cover the patient with a wet washcloth to protect the parts I don't want to melt. And definitely use gloves for this. Once you see the head droop a bit, it's ready to be lifted and hold it there till it stays that way. Let's make the feet next. I am not signing up to smooth and sand such tiny complex shapes. You can if you want to but I am planning to bake them in the oven for an instant finish. Watch the baking process closely, especially towards the end. And once the feet look smooth, get them out right away so they don't spread too much and get even flatter than they need to be. These were actually baked in only 13 minutes. Here is the before and after baking it does make a big difference. And all we have to do now is to attach them to our lizard. If I had to do this again, I may wait and reinforce the body, smooth it and sand it before I put the feet in my way, but I didn't plan the sequence well. More than once during this video, actually, as you will see shortly, so take notes to be smarter about the sequence of the steps than I was. If you look at the lizard body against the light, you may see it's not quite as solid as it looks. So it could use one more layer of plastic to close the holes. I am going to put this layer inside the body as not to expand the shape too much outward. Four reasons I will get to in a minute. One more part I need to make. 
and that is what I call the bottom lid, which will eventually make the tummy of your lizard. This part can stay flat, so I'm just going to finish it by ironing it. To save the smoothing and sanding effort only for the parts that can't be done in any other way. The ironing will also spread the shape ever so slightly, which will give it just enough overlap to attach it with a pen to keep it in place. Here is my second sequence problem. I need to attach the eyes before I close off the space and I got ahead of myself again and attached the bottom too soon and then had to bend the bottom lid out of my way, which was a totally unnecessary and messy step. So as I said, be smarter and smooth sand and attach eyes before you mount the bottom, which you can then trim with a heat tool and clean off all in one piece when the time is right. The Etsy instructions for this lizard do have the steps in the right order, so you can always follow that sequence. Before the eyes can go in permanently, it makes sense to smooth and sand the face first, while you can still get to it. Another great asset of the Play-Doh is that you can stuff it back in any time you need to brace the shape against deforming it with the heat of the smoothing. especially since we only have two layers of plastic on this lizard. Again, if I planned better, I could have stuffed the whole lizard with the support clay, but it's too late for this one. The head will have to do, and I'll take my chances with the rest of him. I'll just have to be way more careful with the smoothing and stop at the first sign of possible collapse. The smoothing tip will depend whether you have a wood burning kit or soldering kit, because each come with different tip options. These button tips are from the wood burner set and work well for larger areas. We may need a whole video on tips at some point. Sanding is not my favorite pastime but at least a bit of general sanding is a good idea to streamline and finalize the shape no matter what you are planning to do next. What happens next depends entirely on your finishing preferences. Some people choose to prime, sand a bit more and paint at this point. But that is by no means your only option. I could send more because, as you can see, there are still some serious dents in him, but I don't have to because of what I'm planning to do next. But first, let's put the eyes in finally. Again, Play-Doh to the rescue. It's tricky to mount the eyes so they both look in the same direction. Stick the eyes into the clay and rotate them until you are happy with his expression. Then stabilize them with a bit of kneaded eraser or a mounting putty. The Play-Doh is too non-stick to hold them safely. Then I will take the Play-Doh out add some more plastic and melt the posts to the head. A 
as for this particular lizard, I will now close the bottom lid of the head. As for any future lizards, I would attach the whole bottom lid at this point and save myself all this mess I made. See this strange fold? That was totally unnecessary. Fortunately, it's not going to show under the lizard skin I am planning to put on top. From here there are dozens of ways you can go with the finish. We may need a finishing playlist. So I am just going to pick one and run with it. Because 3D pens are the most amazing texture makers out there. By the way, here is the reason I put my reinforcement layer inside the lizard because this type of texture will expand the shape out quite a bit and I don't want him to get too fat. You may ask why did we send this if we are going to make it bumpy again? Good question. The reason is that if you don't have an even surface you can't get an even texture. The good news is you don't have to sand every single scratch out, but the general shape has to work well. Here is our textured lizard, and you can stop right here if you are happy. But you can also highlight the texture at this point to make it a bit more organic looking. I personally like to work with the colors of the filament. But that doesn't mean we can't do with a little help of some other medium, in this case acrylic ink. You want something pretty liquid to sink all the way into the valleys of the texture. If this is your first time doing this, practice on the tummy first to see if you like the results. I know. It looks scary after all the work you put into this guy by now. But trust me, he'll be okay. Mask the parts you don't want the ink on with masking tape or kneaded eraser, namely feet and eyes. I am using a stenciling brush here, but anything with stiff bristles will do, even an old toothbrush. Let it dry thoroughly and then rub off the ink of the high parts of the texture with mild abrasive scrubby, leaving only the valleys inked. Gives it a way more reptilian look. And then, of course, you can also play with different filament colors and patterns in your textures. Just saying. There are options. So until next time, go and make something.